Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching Stand By Me by Rob Reiner, starring Will Wheaton, River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, and Kiefer Sutherland. It's based on a book by Stephen King, and as you know, I've done a, quite a few King adaptations on the channel, including Misery, The Green Mile, and The Mist. So do check those out. This, unlike those films, is totally different, as I know this is a coming-of-age story. I am familiar with Rob Reiner's uh, acting and directing work, and as I mentioned before, I've watched uh, Misery on the channel, which was directed by him. As for Stand By Me, all I know to expect is a group of young boys who go on an adventure together and grow up along the way. That's about it. But before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page uh, for full-length reactions to over 30 movies, early access, and weekly polls for what to watch next. You will need your own copy to watch along, of course. Please consider being a patron. Please subscribe to the channel. Like if you like this video. Dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. Stand by me, Reiner, Wheaton, Phoenix, Feldman, Sutherland. Let's go. Stand by me. I think the title refers to friendship. What a beautiful opening shot. It's Richard Dreyfus. I've seen him last in Shaw's on the channel. Do check that out too. He probably knows that person. I was 12 going on 13 the first time I saw a dead human being. It happened in the summer of 1959, a long time ago. Ah, okay, it's a flashback. So it's one of the stories where the entire story is a flashback. And it's told through the eyes of Dreyfus's character. How do you know a Frenchman's been in your backyard? Corey Feldman and River Phoenix. I always knew River Phoenix as a legend, but I've actually never seen any of his films before. His dad was given to fits of rage. One time he held Teddy's ear to a stove. Oh man, okay. They're like 12 and they're smoking. Or 13 or something. Chris Chambers was the leader of our gang and my best friend. He came from a bad family and everyone just knew he'd turn out bad. What is it, man? Okay, great. You won't believe this. Sincerely. I ran all the way! Who are you guys? You guys want to go see a dead body? We all understood what Vern meant right away. He drew a treasure map so he could find them again. A week later, his mom cleaned out his room and threw away the map. Oh, poor boy. I think we should tell the cops. You don't go squawking to the cops after you boosted a car, you idiot. Oh. We can make a nominous call. <laughs> they trace those calls, stupid. Older kids found a dead body, but they, since they stole a car, they won't report it. I know the back Harlow Road. It comes to a dead end by the Royal River. The train tracks are right there. There's so much exposition in the first 10 minutes. Reiner and King, they're wasting no time introducing us to the character and the setup. To the character and the setup. Anything that if we find him, we'll get our pictures in the paper. That's the adventure. Yeah, yeah, we can even be on TV. Sure, we'll be heroes. Yeah. All right, Gordy. Sure. Burn. Come, Come on, burn. That summer at home, I had become the invisible boy. I love Dreyfus's narration. It just provides such a somber tone Mom. to the story. It's in Danny's room. In April, my older brother Dennis had been killed in a jeep accident. Oh man. Four months had passed, but my parents still hadn't been able to put the pieces back together again. I feel immediate sympathy for Cordy. I think that was John Cusack, but I'm not sure. It is John Cusack. He's such a fantastic actor. He actually made one of my favorite films, High Fidelity. You're a Yankee cap. And it looks good on you too, just like that. And it looks like they had a very close yeah. relationship. Mm -hmm. And whenever Renner is shooting Gordy, he's using a prime lens compared to his father. They're isolating him. Chris isn't a thief. He's a thief in my book. And the dad doesn't approve of his friends. Especially Chris, who comes from a bad family. Dude! They're 12 years old and they have a weapon on him. You got shells for it? Yeah. Is it loaded? Hell no! What do you think I am? <laughs> Jesus! It was loaded. <laughs> These kids, man. <laughs> I didn't know it was loaded. You swear? Yeah, I swear. Pinky swear. Aww. Pinky swear. 
Hey, hey. Kiefer Sutherland's in. Come on, man, that's mine! You were a little asshole, you know that. Okay, okay, I take it back, I take it back. I feel a whole lot better about this. What a bully, and he's playing it convincingly. Come on. I think even though Chris might be the more angrier one, Gordy might be the person who holds their anger in. Just judging by his look. I brought a comb. What do we need a comb for? Well, if we get on TV, we want to look good, don't we? <laughs> Vern. I think Vern's the most innocent one of them all. If we follow the tracks all the way into Harlow, it should be about 20 miles. That's pussy. Hey, it's a long way. I think this shot is meant to be symbolic of them leaving their childhood or something. I might be just wrong. What a beautiful shot. Hey, I'm kind of hungry. Who's got the food? Oh, shit. Oh, this is great. What are we supposed to do? Eat they thought food? of everything but the food. What am I supposed to do? Think of everything? I brought the comb. Oh, boy, you brought the comb. What do you <laughs> call? Hey, 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 hey. Let's see how much money we got. Well, 237's not bad. 237's not bad. I'm really enjoying the very simple but majestic cinematography with very wide shots. Come on, Teddy. And centrally framed objects. Get the hell off the tracks, Teddy! You wanna get yourself killed? Dude! Teddy's a daredevil! I don't need no babysitter. I do too. Listen, Teddy, you can dodge it on the way back, man. I think that was establishing the fact that they're still kids and they don't know the consequences. About this time, Charlie and Billy were playing mailbox baseball with Ace. The older kids. Looks like your mom's been out driving again. Oh, it's so funny I forgot to laugh. We used to use that line before. It's so funny I forgot to laugh. That was back in the early 90s though. He's got Chambers beat! But what's this? Chambers is making his move! The what a beautiful is tracking shot. Chambers at the tape. Man, they're so good friends. And it's almost like they're brothers. Everything was there and around us. We knew exactly who we were and exactly where we were going. It was grand. <laughs> you lose, Gordy! <laughs> Gordy, go get the provisions, you morphodite. Don't morphodite. I don't shut, shut up, up, I, I grow, grow up. up. And, and when, when I look at you, I throw up. And then your mother goes around the corner and she licks it up. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they're not buying anything productive. A flashback within a flashback. Football takes concentration. You start in on the girls and his mind's all over the place. Right. I, don't know how many I really like What a supportive brother. I am feeling so sad. Not only for Gordy, but for Chris, because he's from a bad family, and for Vern. He's so innocent, and he's getting himself into trouble. Uh-oh. Hey! <laughs> now he said, sick him, boy. But what I heard was, chopper, sick balls. <laughs> <laughs> He's running for his life. <laughs> you little tin weasel, peckerwood loony son. He took your ear and he put it to a stove and he burnt it off. My father stormed the beach in Normandy. Loony, loony, loony. Ah! I'm gonna rip your head off and shit down your neck! I know all you guys and all your fathers are gonna get a call from me. Except for the loony up in Tokus. Oh, come on, man! Get it! That was hard to watch. Um, I feel bad for Teddy too. I feel for all of them. I wondered how Teddy could care so much for his dad who practically killed him, and I couldn't give a shit about my own dad who hadn't laid a hand on me since I was three. We were gonna have to get moving if we were gonna make some real miles before dark. I have to say... Rainer's... Shot framing is... Excellent. I bet this song was a big hit back in 1959. Am I weird? Yeah, but so what? Everybody's weird. All those stories that you can make up. And he said, this is what we got for you, kid. Try not to lose it. And if your parents are too fucked up to do it, then maybe I should. Wow. Chris is the most mature one of them all. My opinion of him is changing significantly. Any of you guys know the next train is to? We go across here, we can get to the same place in 10 minutes. Yeah, but if a train comes, there's nowhere to go. I'll be waiting for you on the other side, relaxing with my thoughts. You use your left hand or your right hand for that? 
you wish. <laughs> yeah. Smart. He's checking for vibrations. I really think they should move faster. <laughs> and Vern, poor Vern. He's on all fours. Again, what a beautiful shot. I have a feeling that a train will come now. I lost the comb. Wow, from this angle it looks like it's actually a long distance. Oh no, 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 no. Oh shit! Move it, man! Move it! Get up, Jump, 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 jump. Kids, jump. It's a hundred foot fall, but you live. I wonder how they shot this, because this doesn't seem like it's a green screen or anything. Oh, oh, thank goodness. I didn't know I could care about these four boys in 30 or 45 minutes. I didn't know I could care so much. Stephen King, man, he can write his characters so well and make me care about them so much. Young, old, crazy, I, I care about all of his characters. It's, it's insane how good of a writer he is. Why'd you cook your dick? <laughs> Give me a small meal. <laughs> Boys. Hey, Gordo, why don't you tell us a story? Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on. Yeah, come on, Gordo. They all know and love his stories, and that's so sweet. A at school, they put this sticker on his back that says, Wide Load, and they rank him out and beat him up whenever they get a chance. But one day, he gets an idea. The greatest revenge idea. This thing off. I love how they just cut to the story. Oh man. Don't even think about winning this. Boom, bob, boom, bob. I've actually never been in a eating contest before. Except with my friends. But I can't imagine myself stuffing myself with the same exact type of food. Gastro oil. Dude, that is so unhealthy. I wonder what the point of it is though. A sound started to build in Larnett's stomach. <laughs> oh, he's gonna barf! And before Bill Travis knew it, he was covered <laughs> five pies with fused blueberries. Principal Wiggins barfed on a lumberjack that was sitting next to him. Mayor Grundy barfed on his wife's tits. <laughs> when the smell hit the crowd, that's when Larnett's plan really started to work. Mardas just sat back and enjoyed what he created. A complete and total Barfarama. Barfarama. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a wonderfully told story. And he is a good storyteller. Best, just the best. Yeah. Oh my god. I promise I won't hawk no more dirty books. I promise I won't say no more bad squares. I promise I'll eat all my lima beans. <laughs> it's a pack of wolves? Maybe we should stand guard. Do, do, do. Even though the dad tortured Teddy by literally burning his ear, he still loves him because he's heard so he's heard so many good things about his father. Flashback to his brother's funeral. I didn't catch how he passed away or I forgot. Should have been you, Gordon. His father said <laughs> what? Again, they're showing whenever he feels isolated, they're showing Gordy with a prime lens. Just focusing on his face. Just like Renner used this exact technique in misery four years later. It's the way that people think of my family in this town. It's the way they think of me. I'm just one of those low life chambers kids. That's not true. No one even asked me if I took the milk money that time. So let's just say that I stole the milk money, but old lady Simon stole it back from me. Just suppose wow. that I told the story. Me, Chris Chambers, kid brother to eyeball Chambers. Do you think that anyone would have believed it? I can't believe a teacher would do that. Oh man, the acting here is just phenomenal. I never I guess I'm just a pussy. Yeah. I'm not gonna get over that scene. That was powerful. With our stomachs rumbling, we pressed on toward the Royal River. Another 
beautifully framed shot. Hey, you guys, it's a lot safer if we, uh... No, Vern. Come on, man. <laughs> Nobody's gonna listen to you. You don't know what's in those woods. Oh, you always need a Vern in your group. Hey, you guys, wait up for me. I don't know whether that was a metaphor or not, them going into a dark forest, foreshadowing a darker tone for the rest of the film or, film or not. Ace and Eyeball had told their secret to everybody in the gang. Yeah, come on, man, we're gonna be famous. <laughs> you flinched! Don't have flinching! <laughs> but you flinched. I know, two for flinching. <laughs> Poor Vern. Each and every one of the four main characters, their acting is just beyond their years. I'm going to talk about it in the review. <laughs> <laughs> Leeches are horrible, and it's not the smartest way to just pull them off. Oh no! Oh shit, man! Oh man, it's in his groin! Oh. Man, I wish I got to meet everybody's family. We already met Cordy's family. I wish I could meet Chris's family, and Teddy's family, and Vern's family. Come on, you guys! Break it up! Break it up! Stop it! At the time, I didn't know why I needed to see that body so badly. Even if no one had followed me, I would have gone on alone. So there are now two groups of kids, one older, one younger, going to the body. And there will be a confrontation, I bet. And knowing um, Kiefer Sutherland's character, Ace, it's, it's going to be ugly. Oh. Okay, that dude is dangerous and he is capable of killing people and um, I don't think he has a conscience because for all he knows that truck could have flipped over a couple of times and the person inside it could have died for all he, exactly for all he knows. I'm more scared for the kids now. You and Vern watch the left side of the tracks, we'll take the right. Alright. There he is! I see him! Look. Somewhere under those bushes was the rest of Ray Brower. The train had knocked Ray Brower out of his keds, just like it had knocked the life out of his body. Oh man, killed by a train. The kid was dead. Why don't you guys just go over there and look for some branches, okay? Why did Denny have to die? He hates me like that, he hates me. <laughs> I have nothing to say about this scene except it's amazing. What the fuck do you know about this? Oh man, the boys are here. The older boys are here. He was under the porch. No. No, I swear, it wasn't me. You little keyhole peeping bong wife, I'm gonna be delivering shit out of you. Oh, Billy, I wish we never boosted that car. Why don't you go home and fuck your mother some more? <gasps> You're dead. Take it. He's got a knife, man. No problem. <sighs> Gordy, Gordy, Gordy. The gun does come into play. Nobody's taking it. You must have at least some of your brother's good sense. Suck my fat one, you cheap dime store hood. What are you gonna do, shoot us all? No ways. Just you. He's so calm. We're not gonna forget this if that's what you're thinking. Suck my fat one. What a way to just cut through the tension. We we're supposed to be heroes. Not this way, Teddy. Ray Brower's body was found, but neither our gang nor their gang got the credit. In the end, we decided that an anonymous phone call was wow. the best thing to do. Wow, they actually grew up, and they're not looking for glory anymore. We walked through the night and made it back to Castle Rock a little past five o'clock on Sunday morning. I know exactly what, what they mean by the town seems smaller. There's a lot of places I grew up in and saw it, and revisited 10, 15, 20 years later. Just seems smaller in every sense of the word. Hey. I bet that's the last word Vern speaks in the movie. Then. Oh, well, guys, I better get home before my mom puts me on Temo's warning list. No hard feelings, okay? No way, man. As time went on, we saw less and less of Teddy and Vern. 
until eventually they became just two more faces in the halls. I heard that Vern got married out of high school, had four kids, and is now the forklift operator at the Arsenault Lumberyard. Teddy tried several times to get into the army, but his eyes and his ear kept him out. Last I'd heard, he'd spent some time in jail and was now doing odd jobs around Castle Rock. Oh, and Chris? Oh wait, Chris dies. Oh man, I just realized the film started with Chris dying. I'll see you. Not if I see you first. Chris did get out. He enrolled in the college courses with me. And although it was hard, he gutted it out like he always did. He went on to college and eventually became a lawyer. Last week, he entered a fast food restaurant. Just ahead of him, two men got into an argument. One of them pulled a knife. Chris, who had always made the best piece, tried to break it up. He was stabbed in the throat. He died almost instantly. And the fadeaway. And we cut back to Crafus. As in, dad, can we go now? he's a father now, Cordy. Yeah, my dad's weird. He gets like that when he's writing. <laughs> my dad's weird. That line must have hit him like a bunch of bricks. He is weird, but that's okay. What a beautiful, beautiful line. That's why your school friends are your school friends. That was an amazing movie. Oh man, I love the song. <laughs> and the land is dark, and the moon is the only sun we see. They actually used the song Stand By Me. Okay, I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was an amazing film. I've never been so impressed by the depth of such a straightforward plot. It had me laughing, crying, and cheering for the boys throughout. I felt such an emotional connection to each and every one of them and their performances. It was just sublime, especially for their age. The directing, cinematography, acting, music and writing were just above and beyond what's normal. So I'm going to be focusing on these aspects. Uh, starting with the directing by Rob Reiner and the story by Stephen King, both were excellent. As usual, Stephen King knows how to make, uh, how, how to make the audience care about his characters but unlike his other adaptations where almost the entire first act is dedicated to building his characters there is little or no time spent here just the exposition and us being shown the bond of these four friends and that was enough to be honest i immediately felt a connection to all four of them the plot started with uh, rainer introducing us to the gang and their adventure uh, to find the body and it starts right away. As they travel to their destination, each character has their ups and downs, shows their strengths and vulnerabilities, and ultimately their true character as the film ends. They decide not to go with fame and glory, but to instead report the body anonymously, showing that they have matured in the short time we get to see them. Rainer uses this camera to perfection, uh, from how the boys were framed in, uh, on camera, to the slow, deliberate exposition of the boys' past, sometimes through wonderful flashbacks within flashbacks. We'll talk about the individual boys later. But for now, let's um, talk a little about the cinematography, which was very good. I love how the white shots were used as establishing shots, the way he framed the boys when they were happily walking by the rail tracks, to the isolating uh, prime lens shots of Gordy when he's at his most vulnerable was just powerful to watch. Even the color palette used in the film was perfectly reflected by the story and the tone. Great work overall. Uh, there was some sense of a score in the film but nothing noteworthy. But what did catch my eye, or my ears in this case, uh, were the popular tunes that were used in the film. I recognized several of them and they were used very, very appropriately. The music, unfortunately, will have to be cut from the YouTube edit due to copyright reasons. Uh, so I'd encourage you to check out the entire video on Patreon if you can. The ending song, Stand By Me, uh, is a favorite of mine and I was pleasantly surprised when it was used at the end of the film. Will Wheaton played Gordy and older Gordy was played by Richard Dreyfus, who was excellent too. Uh, 
Will was so good in his role uh, as Gordy. He played the role with a subdued and depressed energy, which had a lot of maturity to it. His character was introspective and clearly wasn't over his brother's death, who was played by John Cusack. To make matters worse, his father wasn't proud of him due to his interest in writing compared to his brother, who was, who was a natural athlete. Um, his feelings of inadequacy and not being approved by his father really made me feel for him and his character. His best friend Chris was the only other person who I felt understood him completely. Speaking of Chris, he was played by River Phoenix, who is considered to be somewhat a legend in Hollywood nowadays. This was the first film I've seen with him and his performance as the supposedly disturbed Chris was just fantastic. His own insecurities, uh, which were being from a bad family, was greatly diminished by his friendship with Cordy, who encourages him to take college classes with him, with him, which he does later in his life. And he in turn encourages Cordy to pursue his writing career, despite what Cordy's father feels about it. Their friendship was one of the strongest points in the film as they were frequently seen just walking together and learning from each other. Although presented to us as a rough and tumble kid at first, uh, Chris is actually Chris was actually the most mature one out of the bunch and he wanted to better himself by removing himself from this environment he grew up in. Corey Feldman played Teddy, the son of a PTSD World War II veteran who was who was in Normandy, if I remember correctly. Um, he was obsessed with emulating his father almost for the same reason, I suspect, as Gordy, uh, to get his approval. Um, he was the daredevil in the group, constantly putting himself at risk uh, and being saved by the others, uh, especially by Chris. He was the most immature one of the group, in my opinion, in the sense that he didn't know the value of being alive like Gordy and Chris did, um, even Vern to some extent because he, he didn't want to take any risks at all. His addition to the cast was really crucial as it contrasted the other's characters very well. Feldman's performance was great too. Jerry O'Connell played Vern, the most innocent and reluctant kid of the group. He was the most rational one out of all of them as he wanted to take the least amount of risks to get to the destination. Although made fun of by the rest of the group, Vern is also loved and respected by all of them. O'Connell did a good job with his character. I don't have any criticisms of the film at all. The only thing I might say is that I wanted to see Chris's, Vern's and Teddy's family too. I think I could have related to their characters even more if I, if I saw a little more of their family. Or would that be too much to ask? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know and I don't think that matters since the emotional impact I felt was very real. Overall, I love this film. I, however, won't be watching it anytime soon though. Um, it, was, it was just too, too much for me at times, uh, too real. At the end of the day, the friends you make at your formative years growing up, uh, they understand you the best. Uh, it, th this is true. This was true a thousand years ago, and it will be true a thousand years from now. I want to thank you for this recommendation, and I'm happy that this, this film won the poll. Anyways, thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Consider being a patron. Subscribe to the channel. Like if you liked this video. Dislike it if you didn't. I will see you in the next one. Bye.